my dear students i welcome you all to second lecture on effect of uh, dead time on inverter output voltage in our previous lecture also we discussed the effect of dead time i will write here effect of dead time on inverter output voltage in our previous class last class we discussed the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for continuous pwm techniques and today we are going to study the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for discontinuous pwm techniques i will write here discontinuous or bus clamping or another name is two phase pwm technique two phase pwm techniques discontinuous pwm techniques are same as bus clamping pwm techniques and they are also called two phase pwm techniques they are called two phase pwm techniques because uh, one of the phase legs is clamped to either positive dc bus or negative dc bus and at a at a given instant of time two phases will be switching and one phase will be clamped to dc bus that's why it's also called two phase pwm technique or these discontinuous or bus clamping pwm techniques are also called uh, you know two phase pwm techniques so we are going to study the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage if you remember in our last lecture we studied the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for continuous pwm techniques like sine triangle pwm technique third harmonic injection pwm technique and conventional space vector pwm technique and we found that because of the uh, dead time um, the what happens is that uh, there are there are voltage pulses error uh, error uh, pole voltage pulses um, in a positive half cycle of current as well as negative half cycle of load current in fact we have found that for negative load currents there will be positive error voltage error pole voltage pulses and for um, uh, negative load for negative load current there will be positive error pole voltage pulses and for positive phase current or positive load current there will be negative uh, error pole voltage pulses and then when you average those uh, you know voltage pulses uh, we get what we call as average error pole voltages and those uh, that average error pole voltage is nothing but a square wave we have found it is a square wave so therefore this square wave when you apply fourier series this can be split into fundamental component which has of course very small amplitude and also lower order harmonics like fifth third harmonic fifth seventh ninth and so on as far as line voltages are concerned the third and triplet harmonics will cancel but fifth seventh eleventh thirteenth harmonics will be there and then there will be harmonics around switching frequencies and two times switching frequency three times switching frequency and so on although those harmonics will be extremely small but they will be there these are the additional harmonics which are there because of average error pole voltage okay which gets added to the uh, inverter output uh, actual pole voltage and therefore your actual pole voltage uh, of the inverter or pole voltages they get distorted they are no longer uh, their instantaneous average values are no longer sinusoidal so low frequency distortion is introduced in pole voltages and hence low frequency distortion will be there in the line voltages and in the phase to neutral voltages now as far as uh, common mode injection type techniques are concerned like third harmonic injection pwm technique or bus clamping pwm techniques in these techniques we add a common mode signal uh, particular uh, common mode signal to fundamental or basic mo uh, sinusoidal modulating waves and we get modified modulating waves but we don't find uh, because of these common mode signals our uh, instantaneous average pole voltages of the inverter they get distorted 
but these distortions because of common mode voltages are not found in inverter output line voltages and phase voltages because uh, these common mode signals they cancel and therefore our instantaneous average line voltage uh, output line voltage of the inverter and instantaneous average phase voltage of the inverter will be purely sinusoidal and it will have harmonics only around switching frequencies or carrier frequency and multiples of carrier frequencies and their sidebands which are very easy to filter out and if your load is an induction motor then induction motor winding will be sufficient to filter out the harmonics uh, around these switching frequencies and multiples of switching frequencies and their sidebands because of very high inductive reactance offered to them to the currents at such high frequencies and hence um, the, the although the your uh, pole there's a uh, voltages impressed across in uh, uh, motor terminals will be pwm voltages but currents drawn by induction motor will be purely almost purely sinusoidal with a thd of much less than 5% depending upon the switching frequency. Well, uh, now because of that time, as uh, in addition to common mode signals, we have now square wave, uh, low frequency or fundamental frequency square wave. And uh, this square wave has a fundamental component which gets added up to the main fundamental component of inverter output voltage. And it has lower order harmonics like 5th, 7th, 11th, 13th and so on they also uh, get uh, you know introduced in the inverter output voltage so you are line in the line voltages and in the phase voltages although common mode signals do not appear they get cancelled but these low harmonic distortions because of this uh, average error pole voltage it does not get it's not a common mode signal the inverter average pole, uh, error pole, pole voltages because of dead time so it does this voltage does not get subtracted or this does not get eliminated in the inverter output line voltages and phase voltages so it will show its presence in the inverter output voltages so that's why your inverter output voltage whether it is a line voltage or it is line to neutral or phase voltage it will have some sort of you know what we call as it will have some sort of um, distortion low frequency distortion okay now the question is how to overcome this low frequency distortion or how to compensate for this distortion caused by um, average error pole voltage for example if this is your original pole voltage which is average pole voltage vro say for phase r which is purely sinusoidal in nature and for example this is the current lagging power factor current IR. So, you know, uh, the error pole voltage, average error pole voltage will be something like this. For negative load current, the error, in, uh, the error pole voltage will be positive and for positive load current, the error average pole voltage will be negative. So, you can continue like this. So, what is this? This is the error, average error pole voltage, which if you remember, it, it is given by VDC into TD where TD is the dead time or blanking time by 2 TS. 2 TS, 1 by 2 TS is switching frequency. So it depends upon VDC. It depends upon the blanking time or dead time and also it is inversely proportional to switching frequency. Now what will be your inverter output pole voltage? It will not be purely sinusoidal now. Now this average error pole voltage will get added to original average pole voltage so it will be so the, therefore your uh, inverter pole voltage you know actual pole uh, average pole voltage will be now something like this so it gets subtracted during this period we have already discussed it in previous class yesterday so it is something like this and then it is like this so what is this this is the inverter average pole voltage VRO average, let me call it dash, it is the actual inverter average pole voltage. Okay, so you can see the original inverter average pole voltage was sinusoidally varying because of which your inverter output line voltage, V line, 
and phase voltage V phase was also sinusoidally varying but because of the addition of you know average error pole voltage your inverter you know pole voltage is actual pole voltages are no longer sinusoidal they are distorted like this so they will have low frequency distortions because of which inverter output line as well as phase voltages will also get distorted to some extent the question is how to compensate for this this distortion because of uh, you know uh, inverter pole voltage because of inverter error pole voltage the answer to this question is very simple generate a, this is a square wave generate a square wave which is equal and opposite to the this square wave vr or which is equal and opposite to inverter you know error pole average error pole voltage for example inverter error, average error pole voltage is like this if i am able to inject a, a pole voltage error pole voltage like this which is equal and opposite to this pole voltage so it will nullify the effect of this because this minus this is zero this minus this is zero so it will if uh, it will nullify the effect of inverter average error pole voltage so i repeat in order to compensate for the distortion which is caused by inverter average error pole voltage we can inject we can uh, we can design a control algorithm in such a way that this control algorithm injects a an average pole voltage or average voltage square wave voltage which is equal and opposite to vr and it cancels the effect of this vr and so that your inverter average pole voltage retains its sinusoidal waveform it's sinusoidally varying like this so that your inverter output line voltages and phase voltages are also sinusoidal and there are no low frequency harmonics or low frequency distortions so this is how we can compensate it anyway that that was in continuation with our uh, previous discussion discussions now let us try to discuss effect of dead time on uh, inverter output voltage as far as discontinuous or bus clamping pwm techniques are concerned okay in this discontinuous or bus clamping pwm techniques first of all we will take uh, 60 degree clamp pwm 60 degree clamp which is a special case of continual clamp continual clamp pwm technique PWM technique. We will discuss the effect of dead time or effect of blanking time on uh, you know discontinuous PWM techniques. That's the first type of discontinuous PWM technique that we are going to discuss is 60 degree clamp PWM technique or continual clamp. 60 degree clamp is a special case of continual clamp PWM technique. Now uh, we have already discussed in details in you know uh, module number three the 60 degree clamp and continual clamp pwm techniques or all types of discontinuous pwm techniques or bus clamping pwm techniques we have discussed in details if you see look at the 60 degree clamp pwm technique uh, i have taken the printout of this because it will consume a lot of time if i start drawing these waveforms we have already drawn in one of the earlier classes so this is our these are the waveforms for 60 degree clamp pwm techniques this is my uh, sinusoidal modulating wave MR, this is MY and this is MB. To these sinusoidal modulating signals, I am adding common mode signal. This is the common mode signal like this. This is the common mode signal. How to generate it? We know the procedure. I have already discussed with you how to generate this common mode signal. When, now this common mode signal is added to all the three original sinusoidal modulating waves MR, MY, MB and the addition gives the modified modulating waves like this is MR star. You can see it is like this. Then this is MY star. This is MY star this side and this side and this is MB star like this. So you can very clearly see that these modified modulating waves when they are compared with a common high frequency triangular carrier wave uh, they generate the con uh, gating pulses for six switches of or six IGBTs of the inverter and at the inverter output inverter output voltage will be such that for example if you take phase R phase R switches from here to here and then phase R does not switch during the 60 degree interval in the middle of the half cycle 
uh, this is from you know for example from 60 degrees to 120 degrees uh, phase r is clamped to positive dc bus and it does not switch then it switches from 150 to uh, 100 sorry 120 to 180 degrees and then it again in the negative half cycle it switches from 180 to uh, 240 degrees and from 240 degrees to 300 degrees it does not switch because you know bottom switch is turned on and your pole voltage is minus vdc by 2 and phase r is clamped to negative dc bus and then it switches again same is true with phase y same is true with phase b so therefore a particular phase is clamped to positive dc bus in the positive half cycle in the middle of the half cycle and to negative dc bus in the middle of the half cycle all the three phase legs are clamped to positive DC bus and negative DC bus in the middle of the wave. Okay, so this is the basic concept of 60 degree clamp PWM. We have already discussed it in details. Now, in order to study the effect of that time on this 60 degree clamp PWM technique, what I will do, I will not draw all the three uh, waves, I will draw just one phase waveform. For example, what I can do. For clarity, I can consider only one phase. Let us consider phase R. So for phase R, for example, this is my original modulating wave, MR. Sinusoidal reference wave or target wave. Or you can say sinusoidal, original sinusoidal modulating wave, MR. Okay. Let me consider first of all, unity power factor unity power factor unity power factor means phi equal to zero degree that means power factor is one that means current is in phase with the voltage so this is your mr okay so your inverter um, you know uh, pole uh, instantaneous average pole voltage will follow this pattern if bus clamping is not there then your inverter output voltage will be same as this mr and then if you choose current to be at unity power factor so this is the current flowing through phase r we are considering unity power factor case so this dotted line shows current so what is this this is ir so you can see this is the case of unity power factor current is in phase with the voltage for phase r ir is in phase with vro pole voltage right now what we are doing we have to clamp this phase r to positive dc bus for 60 degrees and to negative dc bus for 60 degrees and we already know if this is our zero degree this is 60 degrees from 60 degrees say for example from 60 degrees to um, 120 degrees from 60 degrees to 120 degrees this phase r has to be clamped to positive dc bus for example if modulation index is 0.8 minus pointed the phase r has to be clamped to positive dc bus from 60 degrees to 120 degrees that means yaha se yaha tak, from here to here this is 1.0 modulation index this means that phase r phase leg r is you know the top switch of phase leg r over this 60 degree that is 60 to 120 degrees which is a total period of 60 degrees phase leg or stop switch s1 is on and it does not switch that means phase leg or phase r does not switch during this 60 degree interval and your pole voltage during this entire 60 degree interval is plus vdc by 2 this is in the positive half cycle in the negative half cycle also this phase leg r has to be clamped to negative dc bus okay say from 180 180 plus 60 is uh, 240 degrees say 240 plus 60 is 300 degrees 240 degrees to 300 degrees has to be clamped to negative dc bus like this so it is minus 1.0 so that means phase leg r's bottom switch s4 is on during the 60 degree interval which makes pole voltage VRO equal to minus VDC by 2. So phase leg R does not switch during this interval of time. Now the question is how to get this clamping, you know, 60 degree clamping to positive DC bus in the middle 
and 60 degree clamp to clamping to negative DC bus in the middle. For that purpose, you have to generate a common mode signal. And I have already discussed with you in quite details how to generate the common mode signal. Okay, the common mode signal will be something like this. Let me show you the common mode signal. Let me draw these projections. Common mode signal will be something like this. Just recall or go through your previous lectures and if you go through that lecture in which I have discussed with you how to generate this common mode signal, you will come to know uh, the generation of this common mode signal. So this is the common mode signal which will be something like this. So this is my common mode signal. It's very easy to generate. Let me call this common mode signal as MCM, common mode signal. Now when this common mode signal is added to original modulating wave MR, I get the modified modulating wave and my mod modified modulating wave will start from here. Okay, so it will start from here. Okay, then it will go up and then from this 60 degrees to 120 degrees, original modulating wave plus common mode signal, their sum will be equal to 1. For example, here it is 0.1 and here it is 0 0.2, 0 0.8, here it is 0 0.8, here it is 0 0.2, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 is 1. Throughout this 60 degree interval, my original modulating wave is increasing and this is decreasing sinusoidally, but their sum is all throughout equal to 1. So that causes, you know, your model, modified modulating wave to be like this. And that will cause clamping of phase leg R to positive DC bus over the 60 degree interval. Anyway, let me first complete this waveform. So I am drawing the waveform for, uh, you know, this modulating wave, modified modulating wave. So it will be something like this, come down and then it will go like this, sorry, it will go like this, then it will go up, it will be up to this and then it will go up and it will go up and then it will come like this and it will cause clamping to negative DC bus. So it will be something like this. Okay. So this is my modulating mod uh, modified modulating wave. Let me call this MR star. So it, 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 how do I get it? By adding this common mode signal to original uh, sinusoidal modulating wave MR. This is MCM. This is MR. When I add the two, I get modified modulating wave for phase leg R like this. This 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 now you can very clearly see that for this middle 60 degree interval my modified modulating wave has an amplitude of one that's the modulation index of one so during this period phase leg r does not switch only uh, the top switch s1 will be permanently on during this 60 degree interval it does not switch so um, your uh, pole voltage will be plus vdc by 2 Okay, so therefore phase leg R is clamped to positive DC bus. And during this negative middle 60 degree interval in the negative half cycle, you know, th this is minus 1.0. And therefore the bottom switch S4 of phase leg R will be permanently on. It will conduct, it will not switch. So that means during this 60 degree interval, phase leg R does not switch again. And your inverter output, you know, pole voltage is minus VDC by 2. So that therefore phase leg R is clamped to negative DC bus. Okay. Now, what is the effect of, um, my interest is to know the effect of um, dead time. What is the effect of dead time on this modulating wave or on, uh, you know, pole voltage, pole voltage of the inverter and hence the inverter line voltage, inverter phase voltage. Now, before I start drawing the pole voltage, let me tell you uh, very clearly that um, the pole voltage, uh, for example, during this 60 degree interval, when phase leg R is clamped to positive DC bus, phase leg R does not switch. You know, dead time is there only when there is a transition from diode to transistor. And we have seen in the previous class, whenever we transition, whenever the, uh, there is the transition from diode to transistor, for example, previously diode was conducting, now 
it is time for incoming IGBT transistor to conduct and what we do when transition is from diode to transistor we you know delay the uh, conduction of transistor by this dead time okay in positive half cycle as well as in negative half cycle in each carrier cycle and that causes the positive and negative uh, pole voltage error pole voltages and that gives rise to average error pole voltage and if you remember for positive uh, currents positive load currents average pole voltage will be negative average error pole voltage will be negative and for negative load currents we have seen yesterday that average uh, error pole voltage will be positive but what happens in bus clamping technique during this 60 degree interval since there is no switching phase leg or is not switching the top switch igbt is permanently on it is not switching so therefore the average pole voltage during this period will be zero average error pole voltage i mean will be zero the average error pole voltage occurs it is there only when there are these uh, error pole voltage pulses like this and these error pole voltage pulses are only when there is transition from diode to transistor okay we have seen it in the previous class and we delay the conduction of incoming transistor by uh, dead time and that causes these error pole voltage pulses and hence that causes uh, you know um, a square wave error uh, average error pole voltage but during this period and during this period since there is no switching a particular switch top switch is permanently on it's not switching it is conducting during this period the bot bottom switch is permanently on it's not switching so that means there will be no there will be no uh, uh, voltage error voltage pole voltage pulses during this 60 degree interval and during this 60 degree interval in other words the average error pole voltage will be zero during this clamping period 60 degree clamping period and during this 60 degree clamping period i hope this is clear to you so now i have to draw the average error pole voltage waveform vr which we have studied in the previous class in the previous class for unity power factor we have found it is something like this it is square wave like this okay let us see its nature okay now you can see uh, we know that when the current is positive average error pole voltage is negative so current is positive from here to here so average error pole voltage will be negative so it will be negative let me shade it so average error pole voltage will be negative then you know it, it should have been negative all throughout the positive half cycle because uh, during this positive half cycle your uh, load current is positive so your average error pole voltage should have been negative but i told you just a few moments back that, that during the clamping period 60 degrees to 120 degrees since there is no switching so there are no uh, uh, error pole voltages so average error pole voltage becomes zero during this clamping interval 60 degree clamping interval it is negative from here to here zero to 60 degrees and from 60 to 120 degrees it is zero fine okay then uh, from uh, 120 to 180 degrees it is again negative it's again negative negative because current is positive and for positive currents we know that average error pole voltage is negative so this average error pole voltage vr we know it is equal to vdc into td by 2ts okay so this completes our positive half cycle what about negative half cycle in the negative half cycle of you know inverter output voltage current is negative and when load current is negative what should be our average error pole voltage we know average error, error pole voltage will become <coughs> sorry it will become positive it will become positive from 180 to 240 degrees and then for over this 60 degree interval that is 240 to 300 degrees phase leg r is clamped to negative dc bus there is no switching and therefore your average error pole voltage during this period is also zero so it becomes zero during this 60 degree interval and then to uh, 300 to 360 degrees since current is negative average error, error pole voltage is again positive it is again positive so let me draw that average error pole voltage it again is positive like this so therefore our average error pole voltage which was a square wave for continuous uh, pwm technique for unity power factor which we have studied 
in the last class, it is no longer square wave uh, for uh, bus clamping PWM technique, like for the 60 degree clamp PWM technique. It is negative, it is minus VR, and then it is zero. It is minus, then it is plus zero. So it is something like this. Agar you have omega t axis, it is minus, then zero, then again minus, then zero, uh, then uh, then plus zero plus so it is not a square wave it is minus vr zero minus vr then plus vr zero plus vr so therefore if you apply Fourier series to it it will have a fundamental component which will get added to inverter output voltage fundamental component and it will have all lower order harmonics as far as third and triple n harmonics are concerned they will not appear in the inverter output voltage but non triple n harmonic harmonics, lower order harmonics like 5th, 7th, 11th, 13th, they will be there and that will cause distortion in the inverter output voltage which is called low frequency distortion, right? Now, what will be our uh, modified modulating wave or uh, what will be the nature of our inverter actual pole voltage? Now, MR star is uh, uh, the pole voltage, uh, average pole voltage of the inverter in fact, it is the modulating signal, modified modulating signal and hence the inverter average pole voltage will be like this. It will follow this. It will be a scaled version of this. It, but it is without the effect of dead band. With the effect of dead band, now we have, what you have to do, you have to add this VR to your original modulating wave, MR star. And it will give modified modulating wave or what we call as it will give the modified or actual your actual inverter uh, average pole voltage will be different for example start from here your original modulating wave is here and to this you have to add this minus vr so you, we can start from here somewhere from here so so we will go like this and then you can see during this 60 degree interval since your error voltage uh, error pole average error pole voltage is zero so it will be same as this it is again minus so since it is minus it will go down this may say yeah you have to subtract this vr from here so it's got amplitude come it will be something like this and then it will go like this and it will go up it's got value positive because this will get added to this then it will come down it will come down and then you can see during this clamping period since error voltage is zero so it will follow this this gets added to this like this so this red color if i shade this that will give it more uh, better picture better view i can shade it this is your modified modulating wave taking into account the effect of um, this dead type the effect of dead type so i can call this mr star actual mr star actual and it is nothing but this is your inverter average pole voltage vro average actual this is the actual inverter output pole voltage, this red color waveform. Okay, so therefore you can very clearly see that, you know, um, dead time causes this uh, average error pole voltage and when this average error pole voltage is added to original um, uh, inverter average pole voltage, our actual inverter average pole voltage gets modified like this. Okay, and what is our line voltage, for example, what is VR by line voltage? VR by line voltage is VRO minus V by O. VRO is like this. V by O will also be like this, but 100, 120 degrees phase shifted. So inverter output line voltage VRY and also inverter output phase voltage VRN, it will have low frequency distortion because this, uh, this uh, average error pole voltage will contain fundamental component that will get added to actual pole voltage actual actual line voltage and it will have low frequency harmonics like fifth seventh eleventh thirteenth 
they will also get introduced in inverter output voltage so inverter output voltage in terms of line voltage and phase voltage will have some sort of low frequency distortion and how to overcome this distortion how to compensate for this distortion just few minutes back i told you that you have to generate uh, an error average uh, average pole voltage which is equal and opposite to this average error pole voltage and that will remove all these distortions from the inverter output voltage anyway we are discussing the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for discontinuous or bus clamping pwm techniques the first type of discontinuous or bus clamping pwm technique that we are discussing is 60 degree clamp pwm technique and here we have shown the effect of dead time very clearly you can see by this dead time causes average error pole voltage like this and this average error pole voltage causes distortion in the actual inverter output average pole voltage like this okay and hence inverter output voltage line voltage as well as phase voltages will have some low frequency distortions i have shown for only one phase phase r in a similar way you can show it for phase y and phase b this is for unity power factor operation mm -hmm. let us quickly discuss it for lagging power factor operation <clears throat> we can now discuss it for lagging power factor operation Second case is lagging power factor. Okay. So that means uh, current is lagging behind the voltage by a phase angle, say phi. Let us draw the waveforms again and try to study it. Now, again, this is our original target reference signal. MR okay and now current is lagging behind the voltage not uh, current is not in phase with, uh, in phase with voltage it's lagging behind voltage by a phase angle phi so let us show current IR so this is IR this is my phase current or line current IR it's negative and then positive a phase angle phi by which current lags behind the voltage okay now clamping again has to be done it's a 60 degree clamp clamping has to be done say from 60 degrees to 120 degrees clamping bus clamping and positive up cycle and also in the negative up cycle from 240 to 300 degrees I want to do the clamping like this so if this is 0.8 amplitude, this will be 1.0. Similarly, this is minus 0.8, this is minus 1.0. So for achieving this type of modified modulating wave, MR star, which will cause clamping in the middle, clamping to positive DC bus, and in the middle, clamping to negative DC bus, you have to add a common mode signal. And the common mode signal will be like this. Let me draw the common mode signal again. Common mode signal will be like this. This is the common mode signal. So this is my common mode signal MCM. Addition of this common mode signal gives rise to modified modulating wave MR star, which will start from here and add like this. Then it will come down, right? Then it will go to this point. Then it will go up. Then it will come down. We already know then it will cause clamping like this and like this. This is our MR star. I have already noted it out. Now I have to show. Um, I have to show uh, uh, the average error pole voltage because of uh, you know uh, blanking time or because of dead time. Current is negative from this point to this point. When current is negative, average error pole voltage will be positive. So that means average error pole voltage will be positive during this period. So this is my VR, average error pole voltage. 
and then from this instant to this instant current is positive load current is positive that that will cause negative average error for voltage or uske baad from this instant to this instant since phase lag r is not switching it is clamped to positive dc bus so average error pole voltage during this period will be zero there will be no average error pole voltage fine and then you can see from this instant to this instant from this instant to yeah from this instant to this instant current is positive so average error pole voltage has to be negative फिर से निगेटिव हो जाएगी इट विल बी निगेटिव टिल करंट इज जीरो और यहाँ पे करंट आपकी जीरो हो रही है फिर करंट निगेटिव हो रही है मैं लोड करंट इज निगेटिव व्हाट विल बी एवरेज एरर पोल वोल्टेज एवरेज एरर पोल वोल्टेज विल बी पॉजिटिव सो एवरेज एरर पोल वोल्टेज विल बी पॉजिटिव यहाँ से यहाँ तक फॉर स्मॉल पीरियड एंड इट विल बी जीरो ड्यूरिंग दिस सिक्सटी डिग्री क्लैम्प पी डब्ल्यू सिक्सटी डिग्री क्लैम्प पीरियड एंड सिंस करंट इज अगेन निगेटिव सो इट विल बी अगेन पॉजिटिव excuse me it will be again positive so that's it so let me share this average error pole voltage in order to make it more you know visible This is our average error pole voltage. It's positive, negative, zero, negative, positive, zero, positive. And when this is added to uh, original, you know, pole voltage, average pole voltage or original reference wave, my uh, reference wave will get now modified like this. Say minus, it's plus. It may say you subtract. Will get so we can start from somewhere here. Yeah. उसके बाद दिस इज पॉजिटिव दिस इज नेगेटिव इट विल कम डाउन एंड इट विल बी लाइक दिस एंड देन दिस इज जीरो जीरो मीन्स देर इज नो इफेक्ट ऑफ एवरेज एर पोल वोल्टेज बिकॉज ड्यूरिंग क्लैपिंग पीरियड इट इज जीरो सो इट विल फॉल दिस देन दिस इज नेगेटिव दिस इज पॉजिटिव तो ये इट विल हैव सम स्मॉल वैल्यू इट विल बी लेस पॉजिटिव Till this, then it is negative. Yeah, I say jaygi. Then it will go up. Then it will uh, come down like this. And then during this clamping interval, it will follow same path as this. This is it. So this red color waveform will show. it yeah this red color waveform will show ek minute just one minute yahan pe jump hoga so here it is negative here it is less negative please correct it so this shows the original modified modulating wave so meri modulating wave ab when you are adding average error pole voltage to it my modulating wave will be like this and uh, you can call this uh, this uh, inverter average pole voltage will follow the modulating wave in fact modulating wave aapki uh, your modulating wave does not get uh, modified your modulating wave re remains same your inverter average pole voltage gets changed so uh, instead of writing mr i could have written here vro uh, average inverter average pole voltage और फिर ये जो ब्लैक वेव फॉर्म थी हमारी ये वाली ब्लैक वेव फॉर्म आई कुड हैव रिटर्न वी आर ओ एवरेज स्टार आफ्टर एडिंग कॉमन मोड सिग्नल और ये रेड कलर की जो वेव फॉर्म मेरी है दिस इज वी आर ओ स्टार एवरेज एक्चुअल दिस ब्लैक वेव फॉर्म विच वॉज ओरिजिनली देयर दैट दैट वॉज inverter average uh, uh, pole voltage you know after you know adding common mode signal you know uh, original uh, average pole voltage but when you add the when you consider the effect of dead time you add this uh, uh, average error pole voltage to original pole voltage 
your pole voltage now gets modified. It is not as given by this black, it is like this. It is a jump here, then it follows this, like this, then there is a small jump, then like this. So this red color waveform is average inverter pole voltage, actual, actual in inverter average pole voltage with the effect of that time. So you can very clearly see it gets modified. Like there was in original inverter average pole voltage, there was no jump here, but here there is a jump. And it is, you know, it is different, slightly different from original inverter average pole voltage. So inverter average pole voltage now gets modified and therefore there are distortions uh, in it and therefore in the output line voltage and phase voltage also there will be low frequency distortions right that is about 60 degree clamp you can try for this was for lagging power factor you can try for zero power factor zero power factor means phi equal to 90 degrees in that case current you can show like this current lagging behind voltage by exactly 90 degrees and you can repeat these waveforms i leave that to you so that is about 60 degree clamp PWM. Let's quickly go to, you know, uh, split clamp PWM technique or 30 degree clamp PWM technique. We are now going to discuss 30 degree clamp, which is a special case of split clamp PWM technique. Split clamp PWM technique and we will study the effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for this 30 degree clamp PWM technique. First of all, we will take zero power factor. Zero power factor means power factor angle is 90 degrees, which means power factor is equal to zero. Okay, because cos 90 is zero. Let us draw the waveforms first. Right now, original sinusoidal modulating wave is like this. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is <coughs> original modulating wave, <coughs> and <coughs> sorry. If there was no bus clamping, then you know uh, uh, the average pole voltage would also have been like this. Let me call VRO average because uh, inverter average pole voltage uh, is scaled version of you know uh, modulating wave MR. Okay, let us see the bus clamping. Now, since we are considering 30 degree clamp, 30 degree clamp means these degrees say suck degree the clamping clamping. This is 30 degrees, this is 70. Uh, this is 60 degrees. For example, this is 0.8 and this is minus 0.8. From this instant to this instant, I want clamping of phase leg R to positive DC bus. 1.0 is this degree may in left quarter and in right quarter also. I want clamping to positive DC bus. This is 90, 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees, 120 say 150 degrees. That I want another 30 degree clamp like this, right? This is what we want, 30 degree clamp we want. 30 degree clamp here, 30 degree clamp here in the positive half cycle. Similarly, in the negative half cycle, we want 30 degree clamp say from here to here. is minus 1.0 and in next quarter we want again 30 degree clamp say from approximately here to here drawing inaccuracies are regretted there may be some drawing inaccuracies but we can take care of that now how to cause 30 degree clamp to positive dc bus here and here and 30 degree clamp to negative dc bus degree uh, 30 degree clamp to negative dc bus here for that purpose, you have to generate again common mode signal and you have to add that common mode signal to original modulating, sinusoidal modulating wave so that your modified modulating wave gets, you know, modified and that results in bus clamping, which is 30 degree clamp PWM. So what type of 
common mode signal will you have? That is to be seen. So our common mode signal will be something like this. This will be our common mode signal. Common mode signal will be something like this. this how to generate this common mode signal? We, I have already discussed with you in details in one of the early classes. You can go through, you can repeat, go through that class and you will come to know about it. Find this is my common mode signal. I am trying to draw the common mode signal. It is like this. And then like this. positive half cycle cover ho jata hai and then in the negative half cycle it will be something like this So this is our common mode signal NCM. When this common mode signal is added to original modulating wave, MR, sinusoidal modulating wave, we get modified modulating wave. And that modified modulating wave results in 30 degree clap PWM. And that is something like this. That will be something like this. Our modified modulating wave will have this pattern and this will be our inverter output voltage average uh, pole voltage VRO average star because modified modulating wave will be like this and inverter average pole voltage will follow the same pattern so this will be inverter average pole voltage VRO star you know after adding this common mode signal causing 30 degree clap PWM then it will it comes down like this it will be something like this like this and then there is again a clamp 30 degree clamp then it will come down like this uh, excuse me yes it will come down it will follow this then it will go to this okay then it comes down like this then again clamp and then it again goes down like this so that's that is it the inverter output average pole voltage after bus clamp you 30 degree clamp is like this as given and since we are considering zero power factor let me show the current also so current i can show by a, you know a dotted waveform like this current is lagging behind the voltage by 90 degrees so this is my ir ir phase current now what will be the nature of um, average error pole voltage from this instant to this instant, my current load current is negative, so average error pole voltage will be positive. Then there is bus clamping over this 30 degree interval. I have already told you that during bus clamping, there is no average error pole voltage, so it is zero. Okay. Then from this instant to this instant, again my current is negative, so this is positive. Average error pole voltage will be again positive. Uske baad meri current positive ho jati hai, so average error pole voltage will be negative yeah, say, yeah, that. okay and then there is bus clamping over this 30 degree interval so during that bus clamping interval it is zero then it is again negative because current is positive over this interval again negative 
निगेटिव टिल टिल दिस इंस्टेंट टिल क्लैंपिंग इंस्टेंट यहाँ पे फिर से बस क्लैंपिंग हो जाती है सो इट इज जीरो इन द मेन टाइम योर करंट इज नाउ निगेटिव सो दिस गोज पॉजिटिव ऑल थ्रू आउट यहाँ से यहाँ तक उसके बाद ड्यूरिंग दिस थर्टी डिग्री बस क्लैंपिंग इंटरवल इट इज जीरो एंड इट इज अगेन पॉजिटिव ओके लेट मी शेड इट यूर एवरेज एरर पोल वोल्टेज इज एज गिवन बाई दिस शेडिड वेव शेडिड रीजन लाइक दिस जीरो लाइक दिस Okay, so this is average error pole voltage VR. This VR has to be added to, um, or you know, uh, this uh, ideal average error pole voltage VRO star, and that will modify the uh, average uh, um, average pole voltage. Your average pole voltage will be slightly different. For example, from this instant to this instant, the actual average pole voltage will be original. एवरेज पोल वोल्टेज प्लस वी आर वी आर इज पॉजिटिव दिस प्लस दिस ये एड हो जाएगा इसको तो इट विल बी हायर यहां से यहां तक ये हायर होगी इट विल बी हायर इट विल हायर वैल्यू एक्सक्यूज मी सो इट विल हैव सम हायर वैल्यू उसके बाद क्लैंपिंग में सिंस यूर एवरेज एर पोल वोल्टेज इज जीरो सो दिस इज ऑल्सो दिस विल फॉलो द सेम उसके बाद यहाँ से यहाँ तक आप देख सकते हैं इट इज अगेन पॉजिटिव ये पॉजिटिव है तो ये पॉजिटिव ही रहेगा इट इट विल हैव सम हायर वैल्यू उसके बाद दिस एवरेज एरर पोल वोल्टेज बिकम्स नेगेटिव व्हेन इट बिकम्स नेगेटिव तो इसका वैल्यू कम हो जाएगा सो इट विल जंप डाउन यहाँ से यहाँ तक उसके बाद क्लैंपिंग फिर से हो जाती है बस क्लैंपिंग सो इट विल फॉलो सेम एंड देन फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर यू कैन से दिस इज निगेटिव इसमें से ये सब्ट्रैक्ट हो जाएगा तो ये इसका वैल्यू कम हो जाएगा मैग्नीट्यूड विल बी लेस इट विल बी लेस एंड इट इज यू कैन से इट इज निगेटिव उसके बाद ये बस क्लैंपिंग है एंड देन यू कैन से दिस इज निगेटिव दिस इज पॉजिटिव सो दिस विल सब्ट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम हेयर इट्स Value will be less. It will be again less, and then there is bus clamping. So that is it. So this red color ki waveform, jo hai, ye actual average pole voltage. This is the actual average pole voltage, and you can see actual average pole voltage is slightly different from original average pole voltage, and there will be. low frequency harmonics in this so those low frequency harmonics will appear in the inverter output voltage also in the inverter output line voltage as well as phase voltage okay and uh, then how to compensate you generate uh, an average voltage which is equal and opposite to average error pole voltage inject that add that to this original error pole voltage and they will cancel out each other and your inverter output voltage will come back to original value okay so this is your actual inverter you know uh, average pole voltage we are average we are star, star average within brackets i write actual this is average actual average pole voltage taking into consideration the effect of dead time and hence effect of this average error pole voltage okay in a similar way i advise you that you try it for lagging power factor and unity power factor try the waveforms you can draw the waveforms for uh lagging power this is for zero power factor phi is 90 degrees now you draw for lagging power factor say for example you can take phi equal to 30 degrees and also for unity power factor unity power factor means phi equal to 0 degree reproduce these waveforms take this as a home assignment and submit it on google classroom okay so that is about 30 degree clamp pwm in a similar way you can try you can try the waveforms for continual clamp pwm 
continual clamp PWM and split clamp PWM. Split clamp PWM. When I say continual clamp PWM, that does not mean 60 degree clamp. That means gamma and 60 degree minus gamma clamp. You know, your phase leg is, you know, uh, clamped to, uh, you know, for 60 degrees. It may, it may not be exactly in the middle. It may be in the first quarter or it may be in the second quarter. Similarly, in the split clamp PWM technique, you know, 30 degree clamp, uh, it's not 30 degrees. It may be 15 degrees dash 45 degree clamp or it may be 45 degree dash 15 degree clamp. Okay, you can try all these waveforms taking consider and studying the effect of you know uh, the dead time on inverter output voltages pole voltages and inverter output voltages that was about uh, the effect of you know uh, dead time and hence the effect of uh, average error pole voltage on uh, you know bus clamping or uh, bus clamping pwm techniques or discontinuous pwm techniques now uh, uh, let me give you some idea about the same thing uh, using this in the space vector domain for example we can discuss continual clamp pwm in space vector domain space vector domain so it is uh, let us draw the space vector diagram this is active vector one for example with switching sequence plus minus minus this is excuse me let me draw it in the center so that i get more space this is active vector one with switching sequence plus minus minus this is active vector two with switching sequence plus plus minus this is active vector three with switching the active vector three with switching sequence minus plus minus active vector 4 with switching sequence opposite to this this is plus minus minus so it will be minus plus plus active vector 5 will have switching sequence opposite to this active vector 2 it's plus plus minus it will be minus minus plus active vector 1 2 3 4 this is active vector 5 and active vector 6 will have a switching sequence opposite to this switching sequence this is minus plus minus it will be plus minus plus then we have two null vectors zero with switching sequence minus 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 and seven with switching sequence plus 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 okay so continual clap means i will consider certain angle of gamma For example, this is gamma. You can see gamma is not now 30 degrees. It is more than 30 degrees, maybe around 45 degrees. And here has 60 degrees minus gamma. If this is 45 degrees, this is 60 minus 45. That is uh, 15 degrees. Okay. So let us first complete it. Similarly, we split each sector into two parts not equal parts i've already done it it's just the repetition uh, and then fine so this is our sector one this is sector two this is sector three this is sector 4, this is sector 5, and this is the last sector, sector 6. The switching sequence is 7 to 1 dash 1 to 7. We have already studied it. I am not going to repeat. 7 null vector, then 2, because from 7 to 2, there is only one switching transition, only phase B transitions, then 1. 2 to 1, there is one switching transition by phase switches. 721-127 it is followed by 012 210 0 minus 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 1 
plus minus minus only one switching transition and then two two is plus plus minus and then if you remember we start with zero zero three two two three zero and this will be seven two three three two seven this we have already done please go through revise that lecture seven four three three four seven right then this will be zero three four switching sequence zero three four four three zero fine this will be zero five four four five zero okay this will be seven four five five four seven then this will be seven six five five six seven this will be zero five six dash six five zero and finally this will be uh, this will be now zero one six dash six one zero and finally this will be seven six one one six seven now you can see during this 40, uh, 15 degree interval 761167 which phase is clamped to positive dc bus 7 means plus 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 6 means where is 6 this 6 means plus minus plus and 1 means plus minus minus phase r is positive phase r is positive phase r is positive phase y switches phase b also switches but phase r does not switch that means during this uh, 60 degree minus gamma uh, angle which is if gamma is 45 so 60 minus 45 is 15 degree during this 15 degree interval our phase is clamped to positive dc bus similarly the, during this gamma interval which may be around 45 degrees 7 means plus 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 2 means plus plus minus and 1 means plus minus minus phase r is again clamped to positive dc bus this also results in clamping of phase r to positive dc bus so that means yahan se yahan tak your phase r is clamped to positive dc bus for gamma and 60 degrees minus gamma if gamma is 45 so 45 plus 15 60 degree okay and since our waveform is having half wave symmetry if phase r is clamped to positive dc bus over this 60 degree interval it will be clamped to negative dc bus over this 60 degree interval with this negative this is just opposite to this so phase r is clamped to negative dc bus okay so since during this 60 degree interval phase r is clamped to positive dc bus what will be average error voltage during this period just few minutes back we have studied that whenever a phase leg is clamped to either positive dc bus or negative dc bus during that period average error pole voltage is zero so during this period average error pole voltage will be zero and during this clamping period also average error pole voltage will be zero but as far as phase leg r is concerned and in other you know uh, sectors and at other instants error voltage will not be zero somewhere it will be positive somewhere it will be negative same is true with phase leg y and same is true with phase leg b so therefore from this in this space vector domain you can find the instance when a particular phase leg is clamped to positive dc bus or negative dc bus and you can find those instants when average error pole voltage is zero right this is about continual clamp pwm in space vector domain and in a similar way we can discuss split clamp pwm in space vector domain split clamp pwm in space vector domain <clears throat> So let us draw the space vector diagram again. Active vector 1 plus minus minus. Active vector 2 plus plus minus. Then we have active vector 3. 4. Alright, 5. And active vector 6 plus minus plus then these are null vectors 0 and 7 fine so this is our space vector domain okay now again we will take gamma we will split this this is sector 1 this is sector 2 this is sector 3 this is sector 4 this is sector 5 this is sector 6 
in split clamp PWM, let's assume a particular phase leg is clamped to positive DC bus for gamma in one quarter in, and in other quarter 60 degrees minus gamma. Similarly, in say in positive up cycle, similarly in negative up cycle. 30 degree clamp is a special case of split clamp PWM. In 30 degree clamp, I could have, uh, you know, uh, bifurcated each sector into two equal 30 degree intervals. But I am not discussing 30 degree clamp. I am discussing, say, gamma degree clamp. So gamma may be 15 degrees, gamma may be uh, 45 degrees, anything. So let me assume that this is gamma. So this is around 45 degrees. Okay. So I am bifurcating this sector into two intervals gamma and 60 degree minus gamma similarly this sector also i will bifurcate into two in intervals this sector also and this sector into 60 degree intervals fine in split clamp pwm technique uh, you, you will start with 0 1 2 in sector 1 0 1 2 210. Whereas in continual clamp PWM technique, we started with 7, null vector 7. 721, 127. Here it is just reverse. And uh, next will be 721, 127. There 721, 127 was here and 012, 210 was here. Here it is just reverse. Okay. Then 723, 327. Then 032. 230 right then 0 3 4 4 3 0 fine then 7 4 3 3 4 7 fine then 7 4 5 5 4 7 then 0 5 4 4 5 0 fine then 0 5 6 6 5 0 then 7 6 5 Five six seven, then seven six one one six seven, and finally uh, zero one six six one zero. So these are the switching sequences in different sectors. Now, for example, if you take this seven six one one six seven, seven this this forty five degree interval. Seven means uh, seven means plus plus plus. Six yeah six means plus minus plus. And one means plus minus minus R R R R phase is clamped to positive DC bus over this period of time. So this this may be gamma. So it is clamped to positive DC bus here, and it is clamped to positive DC bus for this small period, which is 60 degree minus gamma. If this is gamma, if this angle is gamma, what will be this angle? This will be 60 degrees minus gamma. That means if this is 45 degrees, this will be 15 degrees. That means in first quarter, your R phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 45 degrees. In next quarter, it is clamped to positive DC bus for 45, 60 minus 45, that is only for 15 degrees. Total clamping interval is 45 plus 15, that is 60 degrees. Okay, so here again it is 721, 127. That means here again R phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 60 degrees minus gamma. So R plus R plus then R phase is clamped to positive DC bus what is error voltage error voltage during this period is zero and here also R phase is clamped to positive DC bus error average error pole voltage is zero so if R phase is clamped to positive DC bus here and it will be clamped to negative DC bus here you know uh, taking uh, this uh, half wave symmetry R minus and V error during this period is equal to zero this is R plus, just opposite of the K, ye, ye. this is R will be, R phase will be clamped to negative DC bus and average error pole voltage during this period is also zero. So this is how you identify the intervals during which average error pole voltage will be zero. For other intervals, average error pole voltage for phase R will not be equal to zero. Okay. Similarly, you can show it for other phases phase y and phase b so that's it so therefore we have today seen uh, we have uh, studied the effect of dead time or blanking time on inverter output voltage for discontinuous pwm techniques or bus clamping pwm techniques the difference between uh, you know 
inverter output voltage or the difference between effect of dead time on discontinuous PWM techniques and continuous PWM techniques is that in continuous PWM techniques the average error pole voltage is a square wave like this whereas in discontinuous PWM techniques it's something like this positive and for some time it is zero during bus clamping periods it is zero then again positive then negative zero negative whereas it is not zero anywhere in continuous clamping PWM continuous PWM techniques in discontinuous or bus clamping PWM techniques during the bus clamping intervals the average error pole voltage becomes zero but as far as the distortion level of voltage is concerned in both the cases uh, uh, this uh, average error pole voltage and hence this dead time causes lower order harmonics to appear or low, low frequency harmonics or low frequency distortions in the inverter output line voltages as well as phase voltages and in order to compensate them we can inject an equal and opposite uh, you know average voltage uh, which will uh, cancel the average error pole voltage and hence these low frequency distortions will be removed in fact if you draw the phasor diagram for this case it will be similar to what we have drawn yesterday this is average error pole voltage for ideal case let us assume current is lagging behind the voltage by certain phase angle phi now voltage will not be exactly you know uh, average error pole voltage will not be exactly uh, 180 degrees out of phase with this because there are these zero degree intervals also so it will be at other than one uh, this 180 degrees so it will it will be at this angle so this is your average error pole voltage so what is your actual pole actual uh, pole uh, average pole voltage actual error actual average pole voltage will be this this is v actual this will be ideal average uh, ideal pole voltage minus error pole voltage so therefore as far as this error pole voltage is concerned it cause certain it may cause certain drop in the inverter output voltage okay so therefore this average error pole voltage which is because of dead time it can be treated it can be seen as an additional stator resistance it can be seen as additional stator resistance which causes additional voltage drop causing ir drop equal to vr so this vr can be treated as ir drop so as if the induction motor's stator resistance has slightly increased and that has caused increased ir drop and reduced slightly the actual inverter output voltage okay so um, uh, this dead time may cause light load uh, in fact if uh, this uh, voltage drop is very large then uh, in induction motor drives it causes instability especially i will note down one point here that the dead time may cause light load dead time may cause light load instability in induction motor drives light load instability because of this if, if, if this ir drop or if this vr is very large however its effect can be nullified by same method i have already told you if you inject uh, an average pole average voltage which is equal and opposite to this which will nullify its effect in both the cases like this okay so it will uh, it will nullify the effect of average error pole voltage and the uh, the effect of dead time cannot be seen on the inverter output voltage because otherwise we have seen the uh, effect of dead time is that it um, adds average error pole voltage to you know inverter output voltage or pole voltage causes distortion in the inverter average pole voltages and inverter line voltages and phase voltages so low frequency distortion and it also results in a slight increase in this ir drop because this vr acts as an ir drop and causes the inverter output voltage slightly to drop and that in induction motor drivers at light loads it may cause instability light which is called light loads instability and it can be compensated like this so therefore in the nutshell we have studied the effect of dead time uh, over last two lectures first in the previous lecture we have studied effect of blanking time or effect of dead time or, or for continuous pwm techniques 
And we have seen it causes a distortion, low frequency distortion in the inverter output voltage and slightly reduced inverter output voltage. And today we have, in this lecture, we have studied its effect on discontinuous PWM techniques or bus clamping PWM techniques. And here also we have seen that it causes low frequency distortion in the inverter output voltages and slight drop in the inverter output voltage, which may cause light load instability. And compensation can be done like this. If you want to compensate, if you want to magnify the effect of blanking time or dead time on inverter output voltage. So with this, I will complete my today's lecture and this completes our discussions on effect of blanking time or effect of dead time on inverter output voltage, both for continuous PWM techniques as well as for discontinuous or bus clamping PWM techniques. So I hope uh, this uh, over the last two lectures, I have made it clear to you what is dead time and uh, uh, this dead time results in you know uh, positive and negative uh, error pole voltage pulses and hence it gives it adds the average error pole voltages to original pole voltages causes distortion in the pole voltages actual pole voltages distortions in the inverter output line and phase voltages and slight drop in the inverter output voltages and i hope uh, the concept is clear to you and uh, how to compensate this the effect of dead time also i have discussed that point also with you so i hope these two lectures have made the concept of effect of dead time on inverter output voltage for both type of pwm techniques that's for continuous pwm techniques and discontinuous pwm techniques clear to you in case of any doubts you are free to uh, put your doubts on the whatsapp group or you can uh, send me the personal messages uh, in case of any doubts. In fact, I will be very pleased to discuss with you and clear your doubts. I advise all of you to go through this lecture and stay connected. I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you.